Hey all, Hiba here. So uh, if you look in the store at this very moment, there is an interesting ship in there that uh, I actually am quite surprised about. And uh, it is the Algerie, the winter edition here. And uh, obviously I've taken it out for a spin and I'll give you my opinion in this video here. And uh, I can say already that uh, I'm quite intrigued by this ship. So uh, this ship is different from the uh, original El Chiri that you can get in the tech tree in the game. Not very difficult, it's a tier 6, so uh, pretty much you should be able to play your way to it if you really want it. But uh, this thing here, being a premium, uh, is actually quite different from the original ship. And uh, I'll just go through the differences here. Uh, but first I'll just say I'm very interested in this ship here because one, first of all it's a tier 6 and uh, it's quite agile. And uh, any Agile cruiser below tier 7 uh, gets my full attention, and uh, here we actually have one. It's not the prettiest ship in the world, and it uh, looks pretty bland actually if you ask me, but... I have Rue on it here, uh, with Takao and Baltimore. Ingenious, full speed ahead. Velocious, steer clear, and fully packed. All right, let's have a look at my upgrades on the ship. And uh, here I actually have aiming systems mod one, but uh, I think secondary battery uh, is a better pick. So I'm gonna change that here and use that from now on on the ship. And uh, we're running an agile build. So it's double rudder here in the second and the third slot. And uh, here's where things get interesting. You get a sonar, you can also pick the you know AA, but you get a sonar, you also get a catapult fighter and you get the main battery reload boost. Uh, you can also pick the uh, speed boost, but in this case here, I'm going for the main battery reload boost because uh, I believe Algerie uh, is, is uh, well, it's not the only French ship that can equip both at the same time, uh, but it's only one other premium. The name escapes me right now, but uh, it's a recent premium that can do it. So you get everything the usual Algerie has, and you saw the 13 second reload there. It's quite long. Um, that's why the reload boost is awesome. Two and a half, no, 2.1 second rudder and 35 knots, 660 radius. That's really good, uh, especially at T6, uh, where you can actually do some agile stuff, then, which doesn't happen very often in the tiers below uh, tier 7. If we look at the armor here, it's uh, it's pretty much an LGB here, nothing really special. And uh, it has the special French based armor here. But uh, just notice that Citadel step there in the end, so uh, you should not bend over for the soap in this ship here. So uh, I am fresh back from vacation over Christmas and New Year, and I haven't had any chance to play any of these uh, new ships here. And this is my second battle in uh, this Algerie W here. And uh, like I said in the beginning, I like it. It's, uh, it's a really good agile cruiser, and uh, especially because it's at tier 6. And it has all the tools you need. You have sonar uh, and torpedoes and uh, pretty good guns. Uh, the reload is a tad slow at 13 seconds, uh, but you're just going to have to live with that. And that's why I pick the reload boost, uh, because it uh, kind of, you know, removes that handicap from the ship. And you get a full three of them, so it's actually, uh, it's actually quite nice. So uh, in this battle here, uh, it seems that everyone has just left C cap here, so I'm going to grab that first. And as you can see, Agile Cruiser, we always uh, try to be the first ship in the cap to see what mischief we can get up to then. So, the question is, should you buy this ship here? And uh, the question is, well, the answer is, I guess, um, I think so, yes. Uh, if you like Agile Cruisers and you like to play them, you know, somewhere outside of tier 7 and uh, legendary tier, then this is a pretty good pick. Because there are very few agile cruisers below tier 7. Uh, there's pretty much only um, Exeter at tier 5. And then there's the Japanese cruisers, but I don't know, I don't really play them with agile builds. Uh, only Atago, really. Uh, although they have low rudder shift, but uh, like they're not my favorites, uh, unfortunately. Tiger 59 is also uh, a good pick, Agile Cruiser, but uh, that ship is uh, perhaps a little bit um, on, you know, the uh, yeah the special side. It's not a ship that everyone will like, although I love the ship, um, Tiger 59 that is, um, but 
I realized that it's not a ship that, you know, anyone in the world can uh, enjoy. So uh, here we have a Fubuki spotted, and uh, we're just gonna give him a shot. So uh, hopefully we can reset him because uh, there's no one over here in this cap here, so I'm pretty safe. So I might as well just uh, keep this guy here from capping just by resetting him. I'm not really expecting to sink him. That would be nice, but uh, I'm not expecting that. But uh, a reset is just as good. Um, well, almost just as good. I don't uh, know if you remember back to uh, some of the earlier premiums we've had of Tech 3 ships, like for example, Baltimore, Azure Lane Baltimore. Uh, that version was exactly the same as the Tech 3 version, which was like, kind of silly. Why would you do that anyway? But it's nice to see that uh, Wargaming has actually listened to that criticism and changed the stats of these ships here just a little bit. Uh, for example, this. This uh, Azuri here has access to uh, both sonar and uh, reload boost, which is pretty awesome. Um, you don't get that with many French ships, like I said earlier. And uh, it's probably the reason that I am going to really recommend this ship here. I don't recommend that many premiums. And then most of my favorite ships in this game are actually take three ships. Uh, there's a few premiums, like for example, tier five battleship Hyoga. I definitely recommend that one. Marco Polo is also, uh, well, not a must, but almost a must. Republique as well, I'd say is a must. And uh, like there's a few premiums that I say, okay, these ones you have to get if you are serious about this game. I don't think Algerie W is all the way up there. It's probably, uh, like, it's definitely a ship you should buy if you just happen to have 12 and a half thousand doubloons lying around. We take two torpedoes there, awful. Um, but uh, it's not a ship that's going to, uh, you know, turn the game upside down. It's a it's a very nice all-rounder. It's a like pretty much Shama tail guns with a longer reload and uh, you get like, two torpedo launchers as well and you get the sonar and you get the reload boost. Look at that dodge there. And a 2.1 rudder at tier 6. That's a lot of fun, especially when you're fighting uh, against like some of the slower battleships here like Colorados and stuff like that. It's uh, it just gives this ship here it's uh, like an opportunity to shine because honestly I haven't played Algerie at all I think I think I actually skipped the ship because I wasn't interested in it at all just went straight to Charles Martel in the tech tree and uh, yeah I just haven't looked back really but this ship here is actually interesting so I mean it's a premium and I like the fact that finally like I said earlier the Wargaming understands that Okay, if you want to sell a premium, it should be a little bit different from the Tech Tree ship. And uh, this one is. It has, uh, you know, different consumables. There could be other little differences that I haven't picked up on yet. Uh, but like I said, I haven't played the original Algerie. Maybe I have one, once or twice. Uh, so I don't really have any basis of comparison. But I do like this ship here. And uh, the main reason I like it is the combination of sonar and reload boost. I think that's uh, very useful. And... Uh, you know, you can you can do anything that is required of a cruiser then, because you also have torpedoes. So uh, if you have to kite your way to safety, like I will be doing soon in this game here, just remember that you have that stipped citadel in the back. So uh, if you do take an unlucky shell that way, uh, you're going to be in trouble. But I see the 2.1 rudder here. We can just fit in between the shells here, make sure we don't get hit again here. We do get hit there, but that was just bad luck. And uh, that's fun. That is fun. That's why I play Agile Cruisers. That's what it's all about. Um, and uh, yeah, I enjoy it. So uh, again, we use the rudder here to just uh, avoid incoming torpedoes. And we don't slow down at all. Because uh, speed is your friend here. So at this moment here, I'm kind of thinking there must be a carrier out here somewhere. Because he was spotted out here earlier. And the carrier has just been going at me the whole time here. So... Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have a look for it, but I'm not going to overextend because there is a lot of battleship out here and uh, I don't want to push them uh, just, you know, myself in a cruiser here. I do have battleship backup behind me and actually also cruiser backup, but uh, it's still a little bit uh, too dangerous. Uh, we need to get rid of at least one battleship out here, then maybe we can uh, start to push. But then on the other hand, why would you push? Because we have two caps 
and uh, it's just a matter of time we have before we have the third cap. So there's really no point pushing into these ships here. Uh, just stay at a safe distance, about 12 kilometers or something like that, and uh, well, just get those fires going, really. But as you can tell, it's a very good agile cruiser. I've played this whole game here in open water, and uh, I've had a good time doing it. <laughs> I really, really enjoy it. Um, and again, look how fast it turns. 2.1 second rudder, that's, that's pretty nice. And uh, you will be using that, because uh, you have a 50-50 uh, layout of guns, so I mean like A, B, X, Y, so you have two in front and two in the back. So the more you can you know, swing that back end around to get another four guns into play, well, the more uh, well you wish you're going to have of your Agile build. Uh, for example, compared to Jean Martel, where you have six guns in the front and only three in the back, you don't have to be so obsessed with getting that last rear turret into play and again. Like we just turn completely here and take the carrier by surprise. It's uh, it's good fun, but in the meantime, we've gotten a little close to these battleships here. This Colorado here is only 11 kilometers away, and that's yeah, perhaps not uh, ideal. So I'm just going to uh, try to put a little bit of distance between us here, and uh, we have nine kilometer torps on the ship. Also really nice, by the way. Um, and uh, you only get three on each side, so it's. That's why I was shot them wide because I was like, I have no idea what way that, uh, which way that battleship is gonna go. So we're just gonna pop some torps out there. If anything, they might actually make him turn around, uh, so I can get some good broadside shots. But uh, I'm not really, you know, hoping to actually hit him with those torpedoes with a wide spread like that. So uh, twelve and a half thousand doubloons. It's not cheap. I grant you that. And uh, if this was, you know, a tier 7 cruiser, like another Agile tier 7 cruiser, I wouldn't be this interested in it. But this is tier 6, and uh, in this ship you will be facing tier 5 battleships. And with an Agile build you can just run, like, all around them, and uh, that's good fun. <laughs> and um, exactly because it is tier 6, and here we get another Salvo incoming, and you see, like, they're so slow that uh, a ship with a 2.1 second rudder down here uh, you can pretty much just dictate how you want these engagements here to go. Uh, you have to be careful against other cruisers, especially AP cruisers, like any of the Germans, for example, but also all the French. Um, because that's, as usual with agile cruisers, that's your main problem, is other cruisers. Uh, because, well, those AP shells, uh, they are pretty nasty if you don't, uh, you know, keep an eye out. We're not so worried about the battleships because, like I said, they're low tier. Oh, not low tier, they're middle tier. And uh, look, the turrets turn extremely slowly, and uh, the reload is like 30 seconds. And uh, the shell, uh, you know, and the flight time of the shell is also really high. So, uh, as long as you have, you know, rudder down here in the twos, uh, like I said before, you can just pretty much play these ships uh, any way you want. So, here how I uh, broke through the sea cap uh, and then you know just annoyed them over here on the flank and then as soon as they started to really uh, take an interest in me uh, I just turned around and started kiting away so uh, we do have a Trento out here as well and uh, we're doing pretty well here we are ahead by a pretty about like around 500 points whatever it is and uh, just missing out on a top hit there you can see like it's ah oh, it's literally just like a few meters from the ship so uh, let's test out the AP on Algerie as well, because like I said, this is Charles Martel guns, and the AP on Martel is just nuts. It's uh, it's fantastic. Uh, Hipper has better, I think, but I think that's uh, the only one I prefer over Martel when it comes to AP, uh, and then perhaps Edinburgh, but that is a different kind of AP though, so we don't really count that here. It's the short fuse version. Uh, when we're talking, you know, standard AP, Hipper is my favorite ship, and uh, then Martel is a close second. All right, so we're just lining an AP shot up here. There's a full broadside Trento, and we just aim a little bit further ahead than we normally would because these Italians, they usually go really fast. So uh, I'm hoping to get a good hit here. So we do get three Citadels and a high caliber and Confederate in the process. I was hoping to one-shot that guy before he would be able to rush my battleship, but unfortunately, uh, yeah. If I got a few more citadels, 
I would, but on the other hand, I only have eight barrels on the ship here, and I got three, so I'm not gonna complain about that either. Like that's that's almost half. So uh, accuracy pretty good, and uh, as you can see, I, I'm not running any accuracy builds on this ship here because honestly, if you need accuracy builds on your cruisers, then uh, I, I don't think you can aim. <laughs> I mean, cruisers they generally hit what you aim at. So uh, that's pretty much the end of the battle here. And like I said, this is my second battle in Algerie W and I really like it. I think it's a great Agile Cruiser here at tier six. And uh, I enjoy when we get Agile Cruisers down at the middle and the lower tiers because there's hardly any. There's Exeter and there's uh, uh, Yahagi. That's it, pretty much. And Yahagi isn't even that Agile. Exeter, also, 3.3 rudders are still not fantastic, but uh, it's better than nothing, right? At least now we have an, a really good Agile Cruiser at tier 6. Uh, actually better than Charlemagne, I think. And uh, that was the game, 3200 XP. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you out there.